release the Kraken. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. This is, in my humble opinion, one of the best West Coast IPAs you'll find on the South Carolina craft beer market. It is Kraken from my good friends up at Pangea Brewing Company in Greenville, right on the outskirts of downtown, on the south side of downtown. Let's find out what kind of monstrous flavor this West Coast IPA has. Hashtag Westie is Bestie. Right after the theme song. concludes this week we're going to start off with you've seen a lot of west coast ipas on the channel lately hashtag westie is bestie and that's exactly what this is from Pangea brewing company for those followers and subs subscribe to the channel channel for a while i'll throw the card up there as well you may have remembered the feature i did from Pangea uh, in downtown greenville great people up there some i known before some i just met and i uh, had a great time talking beer talking their kitchen all their events and that sort of thing uh, I did grab some stuff on the way out the door when I left there, so I've been holding this for a little while, but it's been staying nice and cold. I don't know quite know what happened to the can there, but that's on me. Uh, anyway, can-wise, uh, design, it's a very, uh, it is called the Kraken, of course, which, you know, from uh, not, oh, shoot. <laughs> First thing that bought the man is 20,000 leagues on the sea, but that's obviously not right. Uh, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans, right? That's it. I think pretty sure that's right. Anyway, uh, it is a giant squid. Maybe that's why I was thinking 20,000 leagues on the sea, because it's a giant squid on the can. Wrapping its tentacles around a gigantic hot blossom um, in very kind of ancient, mythical type of uh, artist artistry design. So it does kind of have that kind of throwback to Clash of the Titans. Uh, 1.6 and a half has Pangea's address on it. Nothing else on the can besides the Surgeon General's warning. Um, on Untapped, they do can, does confirm the ABV at six and a half and list the IBU at a robust 95. Uh, 171 total check-ins, 167 unique. So that's not a lot. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe they didn't, if maybe they didn't uh, do this again uh, from earlier in the year. I hope that's not the case. Uh, 145 rankings checks it as a global number of 3.67, which is a little better than average. Uh, I, I, I personally think this is this beer is very good, especially from someone that's not that wasn't always necessarily akin to drinking West Coast style. Uh, of course, then again, since then, I've had a lot more authentic West Coast style. So as far as an East Coast interpretation of West Coast, that's probably what this ranks near the top of in my mind now. Now knowing what, you know, true West Coast flavor is. Kraken IPA, ABV 6.5, West Coast style IPA. Hints of lemon, pepper, spicy, and piney with a clean, bitter finish. I think that's probably fairly comparable to how my... Uh, Memory recalls this, but you never know. Let's make sure I didn't forget too much and not waste any more time. Whoa! That shit look betrayed me! Be your head for the win. Oh, God! Yeah, that's an active one. Could there have been a better or to feature in my beer head for the wing glass. Oh my God. How did that stop? <laughs> How did that stop? <laughs> oh, beer head for the win, yeah. Beer head for the something, that's for darn sure. Uh, color wise, 
That is... You can see some shadows through it. You can definitely see some shadows through there. The light, the light gets through it a, little, a bit. I mean, it's fairly cloudy, but... I mean, I could see... In a grand, of course, I have the benefit of the light, but... I could see a pretty pronounced shadow behind it. I'm not sure if you can see the same thing. Uh, beer head... Probably about that line. But I can't totally see where the beer head for the wind lines are. Uh, it seems like it's settled down. That's definitely well more than four fingers. That's four fingers and a fat thumb, as Big B Beer Review says. Uh, big cloudy white color. It does have... Now, I don't remember between having it fresh in the tap room and then having uh, it fresh out of the can, I don't remember this having that pepper note to it that they write on untapped, but that is the prominent aroma actually, which is very interesting because I don't remember that. That's not in my memory banks. Um, like if there's any kind of orange or piney, raw orange or pininess in there, if it's kind of being overtaken by the pepper, there it's a very, very strong, like kind of cracked pepper aroma. I do like that actually. I don't want to, like I said, I don't recall that from having it in the tap room, but I do like that aroma. So let's uh, refresh the old taste palette, shall we? Talk about it. Oh, look at that lacing. Ain't that a beaut. Um, definitely better fresh, which is of no nobody's fault but my own. I was expecting to do these local beers a lot sooner than I did, or at least start on them. Um, I will say similar to the aroma, the pepper comes through a lot more on the flavor. There is a lot of that str more stronger pininess, uh, which wasn't as strong in the tap room. So it definitely got more piney as, as it aged a little bit. Um, but it's still very good. Now it does taste, it does taste like, like I was saying before with that East Coast interpretation of a West Coast IPA, it does taste more like that. It does not taste like the, uh, the, the sliced West Coast I had, the Delahunt West Coast, the Great Notion West Coast. It does not taste like those. Those were, those were West Coast IPAs from the West Coast. This one tastes like a less piney version of the East Coast representation of West Coast. When you think of Sierra Nevada, uh, Torpedo or Paleo, when you think of, I don't know if that's technically a uh, West Coast IPA, but it most certainly is an American IPA, um, which often West Coast fall into that bucket. If you think of the Lagunitas, a little something, something, um, or something, something, a little something, something, I don't know, it looks like what he um, Dogfish Head, 16 Minute, you know, those types of IPAs which have more of that, like, resinous, piney flavor that we've always, that, you know, East Coast is always associated to, oh, this is a West Coast IPA, you know, this is more closer to those, it is a bit subdued from those, it, it's not, doesn't have that, quite that, like, harsh, piney hop bite to it, but it definitely still has a bite, um, and it's definitely, there is definitely a line in the sand between West Coast IPAs that come out of the East Coast versus West Coast IPAs on the West Coast. There is absolutely 1000% a line in the sand. There's a difference between those two interpretations of the same style of beer. You will not, now that I've, now that I've tried uh, true West Coast IPAs, you will not tell me any different. Uh, there is definitely a difference between how we make them out here and how they make them out there. 100% lock it, put in the books. That not not no debate no debate. Uh, if you thought I was the, if you thought I wasn't up for debate and you liked what I said about this West Coast IPA, work your way down to the comments. To the first one pinned below has the link to a playlist of the other West Coast IPAs I have done in the past. Check that out at your leisure. Pangea, love you guys up there. You make some great beers, and uh, just by me holding on to this for a little longer than I should, it still tastes mighty fine. Cheers, friends. I'll see you next time.